This is Papa Crush Nights. I am Kayla Thomas, and I am here with Fletcher. Uh, believe it or not, I already know Fletcher. Know, we talked like way back. we go way <laughs> back, girl. Two weeks ago, we were at the Grammys together for Radio Row. How was your Grammy experience? It was a crazy week. I was just seeing like so many people and just so many times being like, oh my God, we should hang out. Yeah. And then like nobody ever hangs out. <laughs> it's like one of those situations. <laughs> How cool was it to be amongst so many like legends and just be like, wow, like I'm actually doing this. This is my life now. Yeah, it was a it was a crazy experience. I wasn't at the Grammys. I was just at the parties, but mm -hmm. I still felt like yeah. still felt pretty special just being like um, amongst and like incredible talent and being at the Grammys has has been a dream of mine since mm -hmm. I was a little girl. So, you know, just to sort of like be in be in close proximity mm -hmm. to it. I was just like not quite relevant <laughs> enough yet, but one day. Now listen, maybe next year yeah. Undrunk can be up for a nomination. Okay, so Undrunk, it is your most successful song up to date. It had over 1 million Spotify streams in two weeks, Billboard entry, and it's off your upcoming EP. Mm -hmm. Why was this the very first song that you wanted everyone to hear? Um, I just... Undrunk just feels like such a solid foundation and like representation of who I am both as a person and as an artist and I think you know with my music it's very just it, it very much just feels like a page that's kind of been like ripped from my diary and it's just like the most honest and and real like I've ever been with my music and that's something that I was like I was nervous about putting that song out at first especially like playing it for my parents for the first time. I was like, plug your ears. <laughs> I know. I asked her about this last time. I said, you have some uh, some lyrics in there that are a little bit, you know, how was it playing it for your parents? And she said. Yeah, I, I was like, <laughs> coughing and like sneezing over the part. So I like didn't want them here, like rolling the window. Right. Like, Don't listen to this. Um, so take me back to when you wrote this song. What state were you in? Like, was it fresh out of a breakup? Tell me yeah. the story. Um, I was fresh out of a breakup. I was like in a really, really low, dark, sad place. And it was, you know, it was like that time where you're, you still miss that person so much, but like are starting to like accept that like, you know, that y it's not meant to be, mm -hmm. but sort of wishing that you could still kind of like go back in time and rewrite history in, in a way. And you know, it's just, it's like, it's about that song that's just like after the after party's over and you're walking home by yourself and you have no distractions left. And it's just that like realization of like, damn, this person like really did a number on me. Right. Yeah. And I think so many people can connect to this story for their own personal reasons. And that's why it's so successful. Mm -hmm. Do, whether it's on social media or whether it's in person, do fans come up to you and say like express to you how much this song means to them yeah I think I think me being so like honest and vulnerable in the lyrics has in turn made people like really want to share their mm -hmm. stories in detail with yeah. me also which has been that's been like the coolest part is just hearing people's feedbacks and and reaction to the song and you know getting to hear like th their personal experiences and like a breakup or something you know n not necessarily even like a relationship right. my favorite tweet somebody tweeted at me was like I've never had my heart broken and I've never been drunk before but undrunk is still like my anthem and narrating wow. my life wow. and I was like that's the most special thing mm -hmm. ever of somebody who's like maybe hasn't even been where the place that like I came from when I was writing it but is like able to connect it yeah. to something else in their life is, and like, evoked the an emotion thing. in them that so that they could relate yeah, yeah I love it so cool so you're from Jersey okay. where we're at right now so to be back yeah. here in Jersey and know that your song is being played on every single radio station here up and down the tri-state how does that feel to you I bet when you were younger you dreamed of this oh my god I like I dreamed of it my whole entire life I literally grew up driving from New Jersey to like New York with my parents and like would stare out the window and pretend I was like the star of whatever like song <laughs> that was on the radio and the music video of it. And this has just been, it's been my dream since I was a little kid. And the fact that this is happening and like maybe there's a, a little kid in the back seat like staring out the car window doing the same thing to Undrunk is like the most wild thought ever. Yeah. So the EP is finished. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. When can we expect it? The EP's coming in the spring. In the spring. Yeah. Okay, so what sto does it tell a story? And if so, what's the story? It does tell a story. The whole the whole EP is about one person. And it's like okay. my, each each song kind of is just like about um, a moment in time on the emotional roller coaster of a breakup. And I don't know, I think like we could all probably like pinpoint that one person right. or that like place that, that we've been in in our life where... Um, and, and that's what it's about. So what I love the most about your music is that it's like you have songs 
about female stories. I know you have a song about sexual abuse survivors. Mm-hmm. On this EP, can we expect more of like a female girl power type of vibe? Yeah, I think I I, I think f- female um, empowerment and, and girl power can sort of uh, comes in many different forms. Mm-hmm. And I think my girl power on this EP is my vulnerability and my honesty. And I think, you know, I have shown like a lot of different colors over the course of like the music that I've released. But I think this body of work is the is the most vulnerable for me Mm -hmm. and came from like a really broken place. And so, yeah, there are totally themes of that, but it's in a way that's just like, this is me and this is who I am. And hoping that other people can sort of like see themselves in those stories as well. And just really wanting to depict like real female stories from like real female perspective. See, that's what I love about you. And you're so vulnerable. Listen, so I was stalking you on Twitter, right? And I screenshotted this when I saw it because I was like, oh my God, this is me. So you said... (laughs) I'm eating alone at a restaurant in New York City right now, and I'm so uncomfy, but like trying to learn how to love my own company and love myself a little more. So LOL, here's to trying new things and being awkward AF. And I said, oh my God, this is what I love when celebrities do this because it humanizes them. You know, it makes you seem like, oh my God, like she's a real person. I go through it, everyone goes through it. And so that was so cool that you are so honest about this type of stuff. Well, I just think like we're, like life is really hard. Yeah. Like it's hard sometimes to just get up and get out of bed and like Mm -hmm. do your day. And sometimes you just need to pat yourself on the back for just like waking up, Mm -hmm. you know? And like no matter who you are and where you are in your life, like you'd be lying to yourself and everybody else if you didn't say that you were going through that shit too. Right. So it, I, I don't know. I think like people are craving sincerity now more than ever, especially like the political climate and the world that we live in. And I think if everybody was just like a little more honest, the world would be a better place. Cause mm-hmm. that's all we want to feel at the end of the day is like connected to one another. So we feel less crazy. Exactly. And I think music definitely bridges that gap and connects people to their favorite artists and makes them feel a part of their world. And I think that's especially what you did with undrunk. Mm-hmm. So you're a breakout artist. You're still new. So I want to get to know you just a little bit. Okay. okay. So we're gonna I'm gonna ask you just a bunch of random questions. You just throw them out there, okay? Okay. When you're in Jersey, <laughs> what is the when you're back in Jersey, what is the first thing that you like to do when you're here? Um go get a pork roll egg and cheese sandwich. Okay, so my intern was yeah. writing some questions for me, right? And she was like, ask her, pork roll or I'm not from Jersey. Okay, it's okay. pork roll or what is it? Taylor ham. Taylor ham. ham. Yeah, it doesn't matter because <laughs> it's just pork roll. <laughs> the um, only option. Uh what is the most Jersey thing about you? The most Jersey thing about yeah. me is like how many times I say the F word. I have a, <laughs> I have a trash sailor mouth yeah. that I'm monitoring so hard right now <laughs> throughout this whole interview. That's how I am too. <laughs> um, are you binge watching anything right now? Um, I'm watching Masters of Sex right now, which is like a I've really... I've never heard of that. It's, it's, it literally is about like the first... Um, sort of like case studies and science experiments like regarding human sexuality and it's so interesting is it on netflix it's i'm watching it on hulu okay i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to check it out you gotta get 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 up in there i will (laughs) okay and i heard you were a disney princess impersonator when before you started all this was indeed okay so who was your favorite princess to impersonate well i ariel used to be my favorite but when i had to put on that tail and like literally <laughs> could only walk with my feet like two inches like apart from each other i like don't love her anymore <laughs> so did you have to do like the bitter taste in my did mouth. you have to do the voice and everything, yeah, everything wig like voice full on okay can you do ariel right now on well, scene i mean it's just like it's just, it's just <laughs> the singing you know yeah look at this stuff ah! isn't it neat <laughs> i love it i love it yeah, i don't want right. to go back don't, i have ptsd don't, don't want to go back, back there, there <laughs> humble beginnings yeah, humble. i love it well thank you so much yeah, congratulations on all your success and we're all rooting for you thank you fletcher you. on pop Crush nights <laughs>